tell you about the place, the place we're gonna go. I wanna tell you about the place, the place to be, where you should know that this show is not about me telling you. But Jesus loves you too. <laughs> Uh, hello, welcome. I'm Lionel Royale, and I am happy to have you with me watching the show. I'm so proud of you sticking around and some new subscribers. Welcome, welcome. Thank you very much. Today I've got an idea to talk about morals. Morals, ladies and gentlemen. Because morals is what we got stuck on for the last 50 years or so. You see, it's morals that keep us out of invading countries. It's morals that stop us in so many ways. And that's why we have the freedom that they tell us we have. Freedom to worship, freedom to do it in public, freedom to do it with other people, and so freedom to walk around half naked on certain days that we've publicized it. But the morals get disgusting and they start urinating and they start fraternizing and frolicking and getting quite, as the fawns would say, horny. You know, those two horns. Look, I found a white feather. My white dove has a white feather. They'll come. So, you know, I'm, I don't know if you know, but I worked in a hotel in Dublin. The Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick Castle Hotel on Kalini Hill, right behind the pyramid and the obelisk. Facing north. On the south, south side, on the south side of Dublin, I will tell you. And so, this story will go on about an Irish nun. And this Irish nun refused, I tell you, she refused. What did I say? She refused. Saliwe. Saliwe was my neighbor, South African Plaza lady from Eastern Cape, Southern South Africa. And, you know, we were from the new South Africa. <laughs> and Saliwe came to me and said, Lionel, actually my nickname was the Hofmeister because they, I reminded them of Patrick Swayze or David Hasselhoff. You see, I'm the cheesy one. So then I'm ruining this feather. Let me put it down. She says, Lionel, this nun not going to let me serve him. Her. This little teeny weeny little white nun with blue eyes, you know them, dressed in black. She wanted a BLT, a BLT. What's a BLT? It's a bacon, lettuce and tomato, toasted on white bread, I tell you, with some fries on the side. Thank you very much. She refused because she could not have a black woman serving her. I was fumigating myself. I was furious. And then went to look, she was none. This is table nine. In the corner by the fireplace. And she didn't want to be served. And this ugly woman in a black habit refused my service. I thought maybe it's a white thing. No, it's we are not confirmed in the church or whatever. She is from the Holy Grace, Mary, Madam, Jesus. Nunnery. Convent, and yeah, she will not be touched by a man or a black heathen. So we got a white woman to serve her because it's a hotel in Ireland. We're not going to offend the Irish people in Ireland. It's their country. It was her morals. And I had to get over myself. The understanding me now about morals. Terrible... These, these, these things that, that are so dear to us, we hold them in our heart because it's next to godliness, as they say. 
Now I'll ask you, no, what does godliness mean to you? Godliness down in the south, the southern hemisphere, you know, in South America, where you got these people running around naked. Naked, I tell ya. Naked like a southerner's pink cheek. It's called a redneck. <laughs> they got no morals, you tell me. Because that's all they know. Let me ask you one. What? You know what you know. Yeah? How do you know what you know? Have you ever thought about that question? How do you know that what you know is true? <laughs> so an old shaman from Hawaii taught me the best way to go about life is to think what you believe is true to you is what you will be judged upon and there's the word judgment and the trumpet sounded your morals is what your judgment is which is a creation made by your morals That's why it is sin to judge. But it's easy. We, we just like, we gotta judge. We gotta look. If you go by your gut, your gut feeling, generally you'll be right. Don't do anything that doesn't feel right to you. And you can express yourself what doesn't feel right to you. But you may not. You may not. Go against the law by saying this is your morals. Oh my God, what is that? What is that? I'm not going to church. You're not going to church. We're having church. We're praising God. But you have morals and I don't have morals. This is what is being said. Not only by you. By a neighbor or two. I've got a neighbor on the side. He still says to my dad, I'm still angry with Lionel. You know what? That ain't my problem. There's about 60 million people in this country that are angry with Lionel. I'm, I'm used to there. Now let me see what's on the next agenda. Let me see my scribbling gibberish. We go, we get, somebody's calling me. I got a very good afternoon, so I must speed it along, Lionel, speed it along. So you remember one thing. Let's go into the reality of the Bible, hey? the history of not only the Christians, but the Jews and the Muslims of humanity as we know it, with Noah. Imagine, he has this dream. Noah, this is God. Stop drinking so much wine and build a boat for all these animals. Then he builds a boat and all mysteriously these animals. Let me tell you about how God works. Let me explain how his spirit only Noah knew and believed and the animals came, not all of them, those that felt they had to come. That's a heavy story. That's how you fight nature. Or defend yourself from nature is by listening to God. It makes no difference if you're drunk. If you're going to Lose everything because somebody else is drunk. This is your problem, not the drunkards. If you're going to lose your mind because somebody else had a glass of wine, 
and you didn't. That's your problem. Somebody else's, not. God will speak to you even in a dream, even if you're spaced out on the worst drugs in the world. God will speak to you if he has to. She even, if however you see God, the God, God, God is, is, is transsexual. If you haven't realized that yet, to be a God, you have to be both to create male and feminine divinity. You see, it's funny, I told you I had no power since 7.30 a.m. Monday morning. We got the power Friday. I was lying here Thursday. We had intermittent power with generator and the sorts and there wasn't, it wasn't looking good. And I prayed, I said, okay, Lord Jesus, please. I need power. And I said, yeah, Lionel. Lionel Royale, you got to think of a time. You got to, you got to put a time limit to it. Time limit to make it certain, certain this, this, this is real, is God is real. I said, 6 p.m. You know, I told my dad, he laughed. <laughs> Guess what? We had power at 6 p.m. Okay, it wasn't supposed, it wasn't the real power, but we had power to this internet and my computer and my Wi-Fi and the TV in the house. And that was from a cord from the neighbor that side. We had a generator to heat up the geezer. We had power, didn't we? We did. Following day, yesterday, Friday, we had power from the government. Well, from the municipality who fixed two lines in the gable. By 6 p.m. we had power. That's how prayers get answered. Sometimes they take longer because you didn't put a time limit to it. Sometimes you're too demanding and the universe can only make these things happen when you first understand and first learn and can deal with what you ask for. Sometimes you don't get it because you're not ready to receive it or ready to deal with what you're about to receive because you get with more. You get, you do, we aren't specific enough and that shit, more shit you didn't think about. Oh, I didn't think about that, did I? Oh, when I opened my restaurant, then some other woman, she came, she had a big chance. She had a better chance than me. She could have opened this 400-seater after she spoke to me for two hours, she changed her mind. She wasn't gonna open. I made it look good because I'm a good actress. Next plate, please. Uh, remember, there's a joke in between. So there's the mayor. He's sitting at the table. Steak. Lovely steak. Juicy. Let me show you a picture. And a baked potato. But there's no butter. No butter. No, 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 no butter. The waiter, waiter. Bring me the butter. Bring me the butter, please, waiter. Excuse me, waiter. You walked past me twice. Do you know who I am? He says, no, sir. He says, I'm the mayor of this town. He says, well, Mr. Mayor, sir. My name is Patrick. And I'm in charge of the butter. I just got shivers. Anyway, so back to the plates that I'm spinning around and around and around and around. And the hair, the hair, the hair, the hair, the hair, the, the buffoon. Sippy was talking about, you know, Lorraine had, or Sippy had this hair, this like buffoon hair. Well, and then the shit, shit, the bird, the bird, the bird, bird, shit. It was my farewell parade in the Navy. My biggest day of my life. My mother came down, was on the 33rd degree latitude. Can you handle this? Saldana Bay. And there was the stadium for all the parents. 
there was no covering because it's a training base and the seagull goes shit and the seagull's name was Nelson he shit on my mama's head my mama's got black hair <laughs> big shit <laughs> so they say it's good luck don't they when a bird shit on your head I tell you what I've learned from birds if a bird flies in front it's telling you slow down you you can slow down a little bit you don't have to put on the screeching brakes to stop for a bird no I mean but slow down I'm sure you're going too fast the birds are speaking to you because you got to listen to the messages you got to re I mean it's like uh, I do go through most of my messages. I haven't gone through some of Rose's messages but try and get within the messages within 24 hours I'll answer or if it's an important message I'll speak back but I do it is a big job hey so if you get a long-winded message from me you better like it and you better read it <laughs> but you I was advised don't do any lives and that's maybe a better thing I make so many mistakes and that's to me is how one learns is through your mistakes this is the experience so you get the dream you get the idea from when you trashed then you got to be sober <laughs> to follow it through to make it all happen because if you're not sober it's not going to happen it's not going to happen right it's not going to be acceptable so that moral shit story comes back to the end of this it's got to do where you at I'll take you two kilometers down or three kilometers to housing that is astonishingly disgusting nobody with morals should allow people to live like that when I had my restaurant I took them out of that but that also has its toll to take a person out of poverty into another class and so the best way to go forward is to reserve your judgments because one day that person it's a small world babes believe me it's a small world it's a very very small world master jack and there was a song that I wanted to sing mixed with another song but I can't remember it now and I wanted to show you my passport maybe I can find it one moment that was fast well unfortunately I'm not going to look and look <laughs> it's not in the safe it's a it's a passport that I wouldn't use now it's out of date but I've got a cross I got stamped I got deported after the 7-7 bombings in London because of my stupidity but I did get through it I still survived I got a story to tell I wasn't molested or treated illly I was just held and kept until my story was that I was telling known to be true you can get away with murder if you're honest about it not real murder it's called hyperbole or metaphor eh? so I thank you for watching if you watched to the end of this uh, I will prepare another video for my story of when I was deported back and forth and back and forth because of my taking a chance I mean the first country I ever went into was Botswana once and that was even without a passport just my South African ID and we, look we're neighboring countries like going to Mexico or to but those were the 90s we could still you know there, there was friendship with the countries because you know late 90s 1994 the whole country changed became you know black friendly and everything <laughs> so thank you for watching please like Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. You know, hit the thumbs up. That's what it's like. Okay. Please like it.
I thank you very much. And remember that life gets better if you try. It gets tougher, but we get smarter. And there's always light at the end of the tunnel. However dark, if you're alive, you've got a tunnel. You've got a tunnel to go down. <laughs> My makeup is smudging. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please comment as you see fit. Talk to you. Love you. Ciao.